What is up, guys? It's the actual Thick Cactus hey, here. Come on. <laughs> you know, it's true. Oh. And today, we are going to be discussing a brand new reward system that was introduced today into Destiny 2 Season of the Splicer. It's called Corrupted Chests, and we're going to be discussing how they work and, importantly, why you absolutely want to be prioritizing them. So, the first thing you need to know is that in order to access a corrupted chest, you need to complete a corrupted expunge mission. That just got added today with the new weekly reset. And if you do the splicer quest line available with that weekly reset, it will naturally lead you to this corrupted expunge mission. So you can see right here, if I go to the moon, which is not the featured corrupted expunge mission, it just looks totally normal. But if I go to the featured one on the Tangled Shore, I can now select between two different difficulties, corrupted and then normal. Obviously, you want to select corrupted, it's just going to be 10 more light and the champions are actually going to change between the two. Then you complete the mission as normal and at the very end, once you kill the boss, as you can see right here, I have access to this corrupted chest, but I can't open it. I need a corrupted key code. Now the ability to farm these corrupted key cards come from completing that splicer quest line. As you can see, it's given out to you. And now if I go to my gauntlet, you can see that it has an extra little symbol here. And it says that you can acquire corrupted key cards by killing combatants. But how exactly does that work? Does it take up a key card slot in my splicer gauntlet within the quest tab? Well, it turns out no. As you can see right here, when I was just doing a vanguard strike, I kill an enemy and then it almost looks like a laurel on the ground. It is a blue moat. And when I pick up this moat, as you can see, I then get a corrupted key card. And it turns out this key card is actually viewable in the consumables tab of your inventory. So that's where they're going to be. And as you saw, it's going to be a natural drop from an enemy, an actual physical drop that you need to go and pick up. Now, it should be noted that it's going to work like that for PvE activities. I've talked to some people who are playing Crucible and then the key cards just naturally showed up in their consumables tab after matches. Like they didn't have to pick them up in PvP, obviously. However, continuing on from there, now that you have a corrupted key card, you can go and complete another corrupted expunge mission and finally open the chest at the end. But before you do that, you may want to pay a visit to your Splicer Gauntlet Upgrades page because as you can see right here, a brand new tier, a new upgrade category on the far right, Vulnerability Exploit, has become available with each upgrade increasing the rewards specifically of those corrupted Vex chests. So with the tier three upgrade, as you can see, not only is it gonna increase the rewards in general and increase the chances to get an Umbral Engram when I open these chests, but also every single week, three times guaranteed, I'm going to get either a high stat roll of a seasonal piece of armor or a double perk roll on a seasonal weapon. So you can see right here, this is an example of a high stat roll armor drop, 65 overall stats, relatively spiky distribution. Like this is a pretty darn good drop. And then here is an example of that double uh, perk roll weapon. So we have the Chroma Rush and I can swap between Thresh or Kill Clip. So this is pretty darn exciting. Firstly, in terms of armor, being able to get these and do a Corrupted Expunge mission, a Corrupted Expunge mission is really not that difficult. And being able to get a nearly guaranteed high stat roll armor from this, like this is actually one of the better sources of high stat roll armor in the entire game right now because what are the other options? Do a raid? Do an extremely high light, almost Grandmaster light Empire Hunt? Like, no, I don't think so. I'd rather just do an expunge mission that I can easily do solo. 
But it's not just the armor. The double perk weapons are also super exciting and super desirable because the season of splicer weapons are pretty darn cracked. Like I'm thinking for example of the ignition code grenade launcher that can get slide shot and output a ton of damage. Generally my god roll for PvE would be slide shot and vorpal weapon but obviously if I'm not fighting a boss vorpal weapon does pretty much nothing. So if I can get that same roll, but I can swap between Vorpal Weapon and then for example Demolitionist, if I'm doing a strike, I can run Demo for the entire first part of the strike, get more grenades, that's gonna be much better, but then when I get to the boss fight, I just hot swap onto Vorpal Weapon and gain a substantial damage bonus when I need it. So having that versatility to not only have a higher chance to get a god roll because you know instead of just getting one perk you get two and then if you're looking for a specific roll you just have a better likelihood of getting it but also if you get like the utter god roll it will let you swap between do two different perks depending on what activity you're doing however with all of that being said you're still gonna have to go out and get these corrupted key cards to even open the chests. And a lot of you are gonna find that they aren't dropping very frequently. In fact, it takes quite a while before you get these key cards. Now, we can actually speed up that process and farm key cards by relying on the part where enemy combatants drop it. If we go to an area with an extremely high density of enemy combatants, we can just farm the crap out of these key cards. There's two I have in mind. Firstly, we have the Thrallway checkpoint within the Shattered Throne. That's a great area. If you don't want to do that, you can simply wish to Shiro Chi by entering the same code you see on screen right here. And that is going to give you another extremely high density area of enemies you can slay out here. And I was talking to some people who were farming uh, the Thrallway CP and they were saying that they were getting a corrupted key card once every five to ten minutes. So after, at most, 30 minutes of farming, you'll get the three key cards necessary to go into the corrupted expunge missions and get all of your weekly either high stat roll armor drops or double perk weapon drops. Now keep in mind that you don't have to farm this. You can simply play normally and by the end of the week, you will likely have enough key cards, but you're actually only able to hold five corrupted key cards in your inventory at one time. So once you're getting close to that number, make sure to go and do some corrupted expunge missions to spend them before you fill up. But regardless, I would say absolutely prioritize firstly getting that vulnerability exploit three so you can get those three guaranteed great drops per week and then prioritize actually getting those three guaranteed drops by doing the uh, corrupted expunge missions and opening those chests. Because guys, for the rewards you're getting, this is a pretty darn easy activity and a pretty darn easy way to get the key cards. Even though it might take a while, it doesn't require a ton of effort. So this is by far one of the best ways to get really cracked weapons and also insanely good rolls on armor. And so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.